These are the worst dishes to have ever been served on Hell's Kitchen. And this contestant who tried to tease Chef Ramsay got chewed out in the very first challenge. Rachel Brown was a contestant from the second season who ranked in 7th place. On the first day during the signature dish challenge, Rachel was the second person to have her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. While most contestants either get the presentation or the flavors wrong, the very concept of her dish left Chef Ramsay in dismay. When she revealed her butterfly shrimp with chocolate sauce, this is what Chef Ramsay said. Oh, f no. Get me back to London. She then said something that further triggered Chef Ramsay. She warned him not to eat the red chili flakes if his mouth was already on fire. I mean, if you ask me, when isn't it? But jokes aside, Chef Ramsay retorted by saying this. No, sweetheart, my mouth's f***ed. It's not on fire. It's f***ed. And I can imagine why. Overall, Chef Ramsay found the dish to be really weird and messy. He did praise the prawns for tasting delicious, but why the hell was there some chocolate sauce there? It just destroyed the other flavors. Rachel was actually a decent cook, but she was liked more because of her personality. She was an amazing person, and we love the bond that she shared with Heather West. On the fourth day, Chef Ramsay picked her out as an emerging leader from the red team, but during the dinner service, her performance took a massive dip. That night, Rachel was at the appetizer station. When the service began, she communicated pretty well with Sarah Horowitz, but Sarah just ignored her. Later, she ticked off Chef Ramsay by sending stiff risottos to the pass. If that wasn't enough, she screwed up once again when she sent a really gooey risotto out. And I can't describe how furious Chef Ramsay got. But just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. While Rachel was helping Virginia Dahlbeck with the meat, they both sent out quail dishes with bones on them. I mean, what was going on? Chef Ramsay was frustrated. Rachel then began to give excuses that she was still trying to get used to his procedures. And hearing this, Chef Ramsay schooled her left and right. He then ordered her to get some ice, but Rachel realized that she had forgotten to bring some money with her. How unfortunate. But the Texan was determined to not let her team down. One way or another, she was going to get that bag of ice for Chef Ramsay, so this is what she did. Please, I'm begging. Add that in there. Thank you so much. You want ice, Chef? Yes, Chef. You will get ice. Well, this just shows how committed Rachel was to achieving her goals. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay noticed that the Wellingtons had been brushed with egg whites instead of egg yolks all night. Rachel acknowledged the mistake, but it looked like she didn't care. And this was Chef Ramsay's last straw. After seeing that only half of the dining room was served, Chef Ramsay kicked both teams out of the kitchen. During the deliberations, Rachel wasn't nominated. But Chef Ramsay pointed out that it was her worst performance since she arrived. However, the next day, she finally sealed her fate on the show. Rachel was at the meat station, and on the very first ticket, she burnt her duck. In the following order, she sent out an overcooked quail, and when she declared that the quail was a little overcooked, Chef Ramsay was furious. It looks like it just wasn't Rachel's day. Especially since later, she sent up wellingtons that were rare when the order specifically asked for medium. Chef Ramsay was dismayed. But all Ramsay expects from you is to own up to your mistakes and redeem yourself. However, Rachel tried to deceive him. When an entire batch of Wellingtons turned out to be overcooked, she tried to hide it from Chef Ramsay. But who was she trying to fool? Chef Ramsay immediately caught Rachel in the act, and eventually, both the kitchens were shut down. During the deliberations, it was no surprise that Rachel was the first nominee, and she was eliminated for completely screwing her team over. Despite calling her out, before she left, Chef Ramsay praised her for her hard work. Only a year later in 2007, news broke out that the 41-year-old had ended her own life with a gun. While most viewers started pointing fingers towards Chef Ramsay, Dr. Robert Ufit, former president of the American Academy of Suicidology, gave Chef Ramsay a clean slate. In an interview with CBS News, he said, My guess is that these people had major problems before appearing on the show. I would almost bet that the show itself shouldn't be held responsible. Either way, we'll always remember Rachel for her selfless nature. One fan said, That moment with Rachel on the ice is downright painful to watch. Another said, Rachel was such a nice lady. It's such a shame how things ended for her. Well, I'll never forget how Rachel went down on her knees to get some ice for Chef Ramsay, but this next contestant made food that wasn't even fit to be a kid special. Kenneth McDuffie was a contestant from season 19 who ranked in 18th place. On the first day, Chef Ramsay tested the chef's abilities by resorting to gambling. There was one slot machine and one chef from each team would go head to head with the same list of ingredients that they received. Kenneth and Corey Sutton were the fourth pair to go head to head. 
They received chicken, eggplant, and orzo as their ingredients. While all the chefs were busy trying to impress Chef Ramsay, Kenneth, on the other hand, was already done with his cooking. Plus, there was 20 more minutes left of the challenge. This confused everyone, and Chef Ramsay called him over and reminded him that it wasn't a race. However, Kenneth was confident about his dish. When it was time for the tasting, Kenneth was the third person from the blue team to have his dish judged. He made a pan-seared chicken with eggplant, and used sausage, and orzo. And despite all of his confidence, the dish was awful. I don't know how he was beaming with so much confidence when he plated this. You f***ed it. Scorched it. For all the arrogance that he displayed, the self-taught culinary chef earned his team an abysmal one point. If you ask me, I don't think Kenneth was a great chef at all. In fact, I would list him amongst the worst chefs on Hell's Kitchen. And this was made evident on the second day of the competition. Chef Ramsay introduced both teams to the Creative Shrimp Challenge, and this was an opportunity for Kenneth to redeem himself. In this challenge, Kenneth and Elliot Sanchez from the blue team were joined by Nikki Hanna and Jordan Savelle from the red team. Kenneth was the final chef to have his dish judged, and he presented a shrimp penne pasta with sautéed peppers and bacon. Before Chef Ramsay tasted his dish, he noticed an unusual clump on the plate. Unsure of what to make of it, Chef Ramsay asked Kenneth for an explanation. After giving it a good look, Kenneth said that it was a chunk that must have accidentally dropped into his plate. But none of the contestants from the blue team had used potatoes in their dishes. When Chef Ramsay asked around if anyone knew what it was, none of them could give him an answer. So Chef Ramsay made Kenneth taste it. Well, if it's on his plate, then he better know what it is. It was then revealed that the chunk was a block of Parmesan cheese. Kenneth immediately said that he grated the cheese into his dish. But a quick flashback showed something entirely different. After deeming the dish to be a complete mess, Chef Ramsay handed the garbage over to Kenneth so he could spit the clump out. Following the horrendous performance, there was no way that Chef Ramsay would want to keep this guy on the show. While Kenneth was shown the door for not even knowing how to grate cheese properly, this next contestant went from scoring an embarrassing one point in the signature dish challenge to being the winner of the season. Latasha McCutcheon was the winner of season 13. Yeah, you heard me right. This kitchen supervisor went from making the worst dish to the best during her time on the show. Latasha was off to a really rough start. On the first day during the signature dish challenge, she was the fourth person from the red team to have her dish judged. She presented grilled hickory rubbed watermelon. Chef Ramsay wasn't impressed that Latasha spent 45 minutes grilling a melon. And after tasting it, this is what he had to say. I'm disappointed. It's underwhelming. One. I'm not really sure what was running through her head at this point, since she was definitely capable of a lot more. Although she only contributed one point to the red team, Latasha was actually a fantastic chef. She did a complete 180 and showed us what she was worth in the first dinner service. That night, Latasha was at the appetizer station with Kaylin Morgenstern. While she was making her risotto, Chef Ramsay reminded her to taste it. Latasha hoped that she would bounce back after her unimpressive start, and just as she wished, when she sent up her risotto, it was deemed perfect. She went on to make some great dishes during her time on the show. On the third day during the jacket challenge, she was the first to have her dish judged and went up against Brian Santos in the enchilada round. Chef Ramsay was taken aback by her dish choice when Latasha presented a meat pie. But the dish was so good that she managed to win the round. Later, on the seventh day, Chef Ramsay introduced both teams to the Italian Cuisine Challenge. Each team chose who they wanted to go against, and Santos made the worst decision of his life by going up against Latasha. The two were assigned with making spaghetti a la carbonara, and Latasha took everyone by surprise. That day, the owner of Drago Centro, Celestino Drago, was invited as the guest judge. Latasha was the fourth person from the red team to have her dish judged, and it was praised for being fantastic. However, the red team eventually lost the challenge. On the ninth day during the crafts challenge, both teams had to roll the dice, and whatever letter flipped over, they had to name those ingredients. The red team picked really weird ingredients, and Latasha was chosen as the red team's representative. She presented pan-seared duck breast with a citrus roasted heirloom, scalloped potatoes seared in duck fat, and a toasted pine nut pesto. Chef Ramsay praised the dish for having a well-cooked duck. But he was also amazed that Latasha was able to use the red team's odd combination perfectly together. And this is what he had to say. Wow, delicious. Thank you, Chef. I mean, the duck is cooked beautifully. You've managed to put all those flavors brilliantly well together. Thank you, Chef. Obviously, there were times when Latasha couldn't score a winning dish, but she always made sure to improve. 
Her performance during the dinner services was almost always strong, and it's not surprising that she never got nominated for elimination. But don't think that Latasha was the only winner who had a bad start. Here comes another contestant who performed far worse than her in the beginning. We're talking about the winner of season 6, Dave Levy. Dave had a pretty shaky start on the show, but on the 6th day, he made a 180. Jeff Ramsey introduced both teams to the 700 calories challenge, where each team would make 3 dishes containing a total of 700 calories. In this challenge, both teams would have to cook one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert. Dave was paired with Andy Husbands to make the blue team's dessert. They presented an egg white crepe with a French conquet filling and blackberry yogurt cream. Seeing the dish, Chef Ramsay couldn't help but laugh. But what Chef Ramsay said after that wiped the smile off of Dave's face. Chef Ramsay slammed the dish for tasting absolutely foul, but what he said next made Dave feel like a loser. Listen to this for yourselves, it can make anyone cry. That's the kind of crap you serve when you've just come out of a heart bypass or an ulcer operation. That's a joke. After fracturing his wrist on the third day, Dave's time on Hell's Kitchen was looking grim. But he had his eyes set on the prize and didn't let his injured hand get in the way of it. On the eighth day during the dinner service, Dave was at the fish station and at one point Andy ran out of mashed potatoes. Dave immediately jumped into action and started making a fresh batch without even wasting any time. It was only thanks to his help that the blue team managed to serve all of the remaining entrees. On the 10th day, Dave was at the appetizer station. At one point, he lifted a heavy pan and this aggravated the pain in his left wrist. Dave was experiencing a lot of pain, but despite that, he refused to quit. After a quick visit to the medic, he returned to the kitchen and immediately got to work. His commitment and determination outshined everyone else's and this made him a very worthy winner of the title. Meanwhile, what can I say about Andy? In short, Andy was inconsistent, was confused, and was absent-minded. And this became obvious from day two. During the dinner service, Andy was at the maid's station. When he sent his lamb to the pass, it was accepted, but when he moved on to the chicken, things started to go downhill. When Andy cut through the chicken, he noticed that it was still undercooked. To right his wrong, he put the sliced chickens back into the pan, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. But did you really think Chef Ramsay would just let this pass? Of course not. Chef Ramsay pulled him aside and berated him for it. Eventually, both teams were declared joint losers. And Andy, despite being nominated, narrowly escaped elimination. This should have been a warning for him to improve his performance. But he was so absent-minded that he continued on with a string of poor performances. However, on the ninth day, the restaurateur with over 27 years of experience sealed his fate. During the dinner service, Andy was at the appetizer station. At one point, he was so confused that he didn't even remember the menu. Forget about the menu, he didn't even remember which station he was assigned to. That's when Kevin Cottle and Dave came to his rescue to help him out. Later on, when Andy struggled to make the crepes, Kevin came back to help him. When he continued to fall behind without paying any heed to what others were doing, he asked Dave to help him out yet again. At that point, Dave was busy working on his lamb entree, but again, he was simply exceptional. He did such a remarkable job that even Chef Ramsay praised him. Andy decided to make truffle salads and was back to being his clumsy self. Not only did he spill one, but he also had too much dressing on the salad. This led to Chef Ramsay accusing him of giving up. He argued that he was having problems with his dexterity. So Chef Ramsay reminded him that Dave had been cooking with one hand for the last three weeks. But all that motivational talk did nothing to improve Andy's performance. His downward spiral continued to worsen for the rest of the night. Eventually, both the teams were named joint losers and Andy was asked to leave Hell's Kitchen for good. It was the first dinner service of the 11th season, and both teams were geared up to showcase their abilities. That night, tableside steamed mussels were to be served by Amanda Giblin and Christian Rosati. What's more, actors Deborah Ann Wall and Owain Yeoman dined at Hell's Kitchen. As the red team received their first order, Gina Aloise annoyed Mary Ponelt with her silly questions. And when Gina finally started to cook the scallops, the team got worried. Gina flipped the scallops way too many times, and it looked like they weren't cooking very well. When she finally sent her scallops to the pass, the team was worried that Chef Ramsay would force them to restart. But this is what he said. Who cooked them? I did, Chef. Excellent, thank you. Wow, that was something no one expected. Meanwhile, in the blue team, when Ramsay called out their first order, they hardly gave a response and this annoyed the famous chef. Then, Chef Ramsay had to ask them again, hoping to get a response from the team. Now, there was one contestant who wanted to stand out with his performance, and that was Sebastian Royo. Sebastian had never cooked Italian food before since he was a Mexican who loves spicy food. 
However, he wanted to impress Chef Ramsay by cooking the perfect risotto. But all he managed was an undercooked risotto, which left Chef Ramsay frustrated. Well, that was a failure. Anyway, as you know, Hell's Kitchen is all about collaboration. So while Sebastian's risotto was trashed, Zach Womack had cooked the scallops to perfection. And this further frustrated both Ramsay and Zach, since these delicious scallops were now wasted. In the red team, Gina wanted to prove to her teammates that she could impress Chef Ramsay with her scallops again. But this time, she ended up annoying them by messing up her timing. Despite asking Nedra Harris on several occasions for the time, Gina continued to look confused. Then, when Chef Ramsay asked for the time on the order, Gina continued to pester Nedra. Well, Nedra ignored her, but when Gina was about to walk up to the pass, Nedra still needed two more minutes. When the two finally delivered their dishes, the scallops were rejected for being overcooked and watery. First of all, Gina was a confused mess, but what she did next was even crazier. She confused Chef Ramsay. Somebody else forgot to do risotto. What you mean? Gina didn't think twice before throwing Nedra under the bus, and Nedra obviously wasn't happy about it. I mean, who would be? After all the drama, when Gina sent her refire to the pass, it was rejected for being too rubbery, and this angered Ramsay. Can't even hold it together for the second ticket. Get out. In the blue team, Sebastian got his refire accepted, and Zach came up with another round of perfectly cooked scallops. This guy was killing it. The blue team then started with their second ticket. And when Sebastian brought his capellini to the pass, it was rejected for being too spicy and disgusting. So, once again, Zach's perfectly cooked scallops were wasted. After Chef Ramsay urged Sebastian to get it together, Michael Landon gave him a little pep talk. And in response, Sebastian called him Mikey Wikey, much to the surprise of his teammates. Later, when he tried to communicate with Zach on the timing, Zach didn't respond. So, Sebastian went right back to poking fun at people, and this time, he called Zach Zacky Wacky. But there was one person who didn't appreciate this behavior in the kitchen, and that was Chef Ramsay. And once he heard Sebastian calling out names, all hell broke loose. Zacky Wacky. Sorry, I apologize about that, Chef. Yeah, do me a favor. Get out! Despite being asked to leave, Sebastian tried to return to his station from behind the kitchen, but who was he trying to fool? Chef Ramsay then booted him out in the most iconic way. Second time, get out! Seeing the blue team in disarray, Christian decided to help his team out by serving mussels to the blue diners, even though some of them didn't order. And I have to say, that was a smart idea to buy some time and keep the diners happy. In the red team, Nedra and Mary managed to push out several orders of appetizers, and the team moved on to the entrees. But they soon stumbled when Danielle Bourne got completely lost and failed to remember the tickets. She then revealed to Susan Heaton that she had never worked in a brigade before. Danielle then grabbed the ticket, wondering if it was the one that Chef Ramsay had read. But when Ramsay saw this happening, he schooled her. One, two, three, yes, yes. and it's that. You're making such hard work out of nothing. In the blue kitchen, John Scallion and Zach finally finished their appetizers and moved on to the entrees. When Michael sent his lamb to the pass, it came out raw, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. In the blue kitchen, Barrett Bear was ready to serve his Wellingtons. But Michael still needed some time on his lamb, which annoyed Barrett. Then, when they finally sent their meat to the pass, Chef Ramsay sent it right back. He believed that the lamb had more bone than meat and that the Wellingtons were overcooked. Ramsay was already frustrated, but as he talked to the blue team about it, guess who showed up? Sebastian! Oh no, he shouldn't have done that one. When Sebastian started to request that Chef Ramsay let him get back to his station, Ramsay lost it. You come back downstairs again, you'll be leaving through the front door. Now get out! And this time, Sebastian wasn't the only one to go. Chef Ramsay asked him to take Michael and Barrett along with him and to not return to the service again. In the red kitchen, Chef Ramsay was annoyed seeing the black kale missing. And when Ramsay asked about it, neither Danielle nor Susan answered. Later, when they brought their garnishes to the pass, Susan's garnish came out rubbery, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. So he decided to kick her out. After, when Chef Ramsay reminded Danielle about the ticket, she got confused since she didn't know if he wanted the refire along with the new order. Ramsay had had enough of her and kicked her out too. Or do you just need the two chicken and two Wellington? Get out! Back in the blue kitchen, Anthony was at the meat station and got his lamb accepted. But Jeremy Madden pissed Chef Ramsay off when he failed to repeat the next order even after Ramsay repeated it three times. It was now Jeremy's turn to leave the kitchen. One hour and a half into the service, Mary was assigned to the garnish station in addition to her station. Understandably, with two stations to manage, Mary was overwhelmed. One of the customers even received a dish without garnishes. It needs garnish. You're absolutely right. My apologies. Give me two minutes. Since she was struggling to get the garnishes done, Chef Ramsay urged someone to help her out. 
He then saw Jacqueline Baldessari doing nothing but hydrating herself, which made Ramsey furious. And obviously, she was the next one to leave the kitchen. Get out! Get out! Back in the blue kitchen, things hadn't got any better. When Dan sent his garnish up, it came out undercooked, and when John sent out his risotto, it was overcooked. Chef Ramsey was just about done with these guys. Take that on yourself and get the f*** out of there. The famous chef was already angry with the blue team because of their performance, but Ray Alonghi made them even more furious. At this point, I didn't even think that was possible. When Chef Ramsey asked Ray to taste the risotto, you won't believe what Ray did. He used his finger, and this made Chef Ramsey infuriated. And well, I don't have to tell you what followed. Well, bye bye Ray, see you in the dorms. Later on, when Anthony brought his risotto to the pass, Chef Ramsey rejected not only the dish, but also his presence in the kitchen. This left Zach as the only remaining chef in the blue kitchen. But how much could one man do? On top of the pressure of handling almost all the stations, Zach started to feel unwell due to dehydration. Oh, oh my god. But he failed to give up. He soon got back to the kitchen and started working on the entrees. This man is a total beast. Christian was then called back to the kitchen. And along with sous chef James and sous chef Andy, they finally started serving the entrees. In the red kitchen, the team was back on track and was pushing out the entrees quickly. But Zach wasn't far behind since both teams finished their service together. Post dinner service, the red team was declared as the winner, but Chef Ramsey praised Zach for his commitment. You give it your all. Yes, Chef. That's the kind of commitment I want to see. He deserved every bit of it. He was a one man army indeed. While this service saw the most contestants being kicked out of the kitchen, this next service is the worst performance by the red team yet. It was the second day of dinner service for the All Stars. That night, a fresh seafood appetizer was served tableside by Michelle Tribble and Giovanni Filippone. What's more, John Ram, Zach Ertz, Alyssa Nair, and Juki Johnston dined in. The blue team received their first order and it was from Alyssa and Juki's table. Chef Ramsey really wanted the orders to go out without any problems or mistakes. But we all know that wasn't gonna happen. Nick Peters Bond and Benjamin Knack were the first to finish and swiftly got their dishes accepted. With a great start, the blue team pumped out their appetizers. In the red kitchen, Dana Cohen and Elise Harris were pushing out their appetizers just as well and quickly moved on to the entrees. As Barbie Marshall and Manda Palomino were working on their entrees, Ashley Nichol pissed Chef Ramsey off. She's looking at a watch. No, I'm sorry, Chef. She's no. a little bit late for the date. No. Oh. 45 minutes into the service, the blue team was handling their entrees. As Chef Ramsey called out the orders, Josh Trovato didn't give a single response, making Ramsey irritated. When Josh gave an excuse for being focused on cooking his meat, Chef Ramsey sarcastically thanked him. Then Van Hurt made Chef Ramsey impatient when he delayed sending out the salmon order. Despite the problems, they got their order accepted and the blue team continued to push out their entrees. In the red kitchen, as Barbie got ready with her meat, Manda wasn't ready with the garnishes. Seeing this, Chef Ramsey became frustrated and accused Manda of dragging the red team down. Then Robin Almodovar pissed Chef Ramsey off by sending a raw salmon to the pass. Manda can't even get her head round two tables at the same time. Robin and Manda had already irritated Chef Ramsay enough, but Ashley added fuel to the fire by not paying any attention. Watch your nails, watch your nails. Oh my god. In the blue kitchen, everyone was ready with their dishes, but Josh was late with his, and that made Chef Ramsay really impatient. But the wait was surprisingly worth it since his dish was accepted. The blue team continued to push out entrees at a great pace, and Ramsey loved the momentum. In the red kitchen, the red team was working on their refire. After Chef Ramsey asked for a time on the refires, Robin tried to communicate with Barbie, but Barbie rudely shut her down since she was talking to Ramsey. This attitude surprised everyone on the team. Seeing Barbie and Robin's tug of war, Chef Ramsey was dismayed. I haven't dropped my salmon yet. I need to know how long you can lamb. When the red team sent the refire to the pass, Chef Ramsey rejected every single one of them. And, well, I can't tell you how infuriated he really was. What does that mean? Last chunk! In the meantime, the blue team was still working really hard. The red team got their third attempt accepted and got started with their next ticket. As Robin and Ashley brought their dishes up to the pass, Chef Ramsey surprised the red team by calling the blue team over. But he excluded Nick and Giovanni since they had already started on their desserts. And just then, Chef Ramsay found Ashley's overcooked lobster wellington and Robin's ice-cold halibut and was done with the red team. It was time to kick all of them out, and this is how the famous chef sent them packing. Get the f*** out! Chef Ramsay then deemed the red team's performance to be worse than the opening night and criticized them for failing to bounce back. 
But in this next service, while one contestant used his bare hands to try the food, another failed to use her head. What Chef Ramsay did next hardly ever happens on Hell's Kitchen. It was the third day of dinner service. As both teams received their orders, Chef Ramsay warned Keith Green to not slob the risottos. However, Keith showed a mini horror movie to the customers by first tasting the risotto with his spoon, then using the same spoon to plate the dish. And wait, 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 we're not done yet. He even grabbed the risotto rice with his bare hands. Seeing this, Chef Ramsay called him out. I mean, he had to, right? That's disgusting. Customers in front of you, get a nice spoon or a ladle. That wasn't the only thing he was called out for, though. He didn't even dress properly, and Chef Ramsay had to literally ask him to pull his pants up. Sure, it's a live kitchen, and diners love to see chefs working on their food, but not someone's butt crack. However, this wasn't the only thing that had gone awry, since sometime later, Garrett Tell was caught whistling. This wasn't the start Chef Ramsay was looking forward to. And the Red Kitchen only made it worse, since Heather West overused her leadership skills, and Chef Ramsay couldn't handle it anymore. Heather, do you understand that? Yes, it's her bloody call! 30 minutes into the service, both teams were finally pushing out their appetizers. But then, in the blue team, Giacomo Alfieri told sous chef Scott that his oven wasn't heating up very well. Upon examination, it was found that he didn't even turn it on. Giacomo, are you really that stupid? At first, sous chef Scott berated him, but then it was Chef Ramsay's turn. Why is the oven not on? I'm not sure, Chef, I'm sorry. You're not sure. You donkey! Now, I'm not sure what was up with this batch of contestants since Garrett angered Chef Ramsay by whistling again. In the red kitchen, Heather produced a very thin red wine for her fish dish, and seeing this, Chef Ramsay refused to serve it. Don't send anything, Heather, unless you know it's perfect. Because yeah. you know damn well it's not going out there. There was no room for substandard food here. An hour and 10 minutes into the service, in the blue kitchen, Giacomo made Chef Ramsay annoyed with his duck. When Ramsay asked Giacomo if he had another duck resting, he lied and claimed that he had, but it wasn't there. Chef Ramsay knew very well that he was lying and chewed him out right then and there. Why are you lying to me? I'm sorry, Chef, I didn't mean to lie. You're f***ing useless, you know that. The famous chef then reassigned Giacomo to the fish, Keith to the meat, Garrett to the appetizers, and Tom to the garnishes. Two hours into the service, the blue team's diners were getting impatient with the wait. And in the red team, while they did serve half of their entrees, Maribel Miller was under great pressure. That night, the lamb wellington was the most popular dish on the menu. And with many orders coming in, Maribel declared that she only had six wellingtons left instead of eight, which was on order. Chef Ramsay was dismayed, and when he was about to talk, Sarah Horowitz talked over him. But we know that nobody should dare to cut Chef Ramsay off when he's talking. So this is what he did in response. She's just told me about a massive problem we've got. You're mouthing off that we're good. Ramsay then asked Maribel to make some fresh Wellingtons, but not before calling her utterly useless. The blue team finally got their two entree orders out. But Chef Ramsay was annoyed with Tom Pauly for whining all the time. A moment later, Jean-Philippe came back to the red kitchen to tell Chef Ramsay something shocking. A table was about to walk out because of the long wait times. Ramsay was frustrated with the red team and asked them about it. When Maribel decided that she needed 7 more minutes, the table agreed to stay, but reluctantly. However, when she sent her Wellingtons to the pass, they came out raw, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. Chef Ramsay was getting furious with the wait and the mistakes piling up with every minute that passed. And well, Maribel started to stumble, and the table got really restless. Back in the blue kitchen, Tom ran out of mashed potatoes, and this made Ramsay frustrated. When Tom looked confused after Chef Ramsay asked him a question, the famous chef lost it. What the f is this, Tom? I'm looking for it, chef. I just... Later, the red table that had been waiting for a very long time came to Ramsay to speak to him about their food. Maribel then declared that she needed 45 more seconds on her meat. However, when she brought her Wellingtons to the pass, they were undercooked. By the time she cooked the Wellingtons right, the table had already left. This was one of the most disastrous services ever, and Chef Ramsay was just left with one thing to do to shut both kitchens down. Switch everything off, yeah? During the signature dish challenge, Cleek was the 11th contestant to have her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. When Chef Ramsay picked up her dish, there was only one thing that came to mind, and it was diapers. When he asked who made it, Cleek spoke up and explained that she created smoked chicken enchiladas with poblano cream. Soon after, she gave some more information about herself and added that she owned her own recreational cooking school. But when Chef Ramsay asked her if she was a trained chef before she even set up this school, Cleek simply denied it. Chef Ramsay was later shocked to learn that she charged 300 bucks for 3-4 to four hours of lessons. That's a lot. For someone who was a culinary instructor, Cleek's dish didn't really demonstrate that. 
and just take a look at that dish's size. The signature dish challenge is meant for sampling, not to feed the entire neighborhood. Anyway, Cleek gave a lame excuse about the portion size, claiming that she was used to feeding big Nebraska boys. But did the dish at least taste good? Absolutely not. Chef Ramsey spat the food out as soon as he took his first bite. Was Cleek actually charging people 300 bucks to teach them how to make garbage? Jeff Ramsey was so appalled by her dish that the only thing he could manage to say was this. You seriously charge $300 to teach people how to make that crap? I feel like I need some plastic wrap on my ass. Offended by Chef Ramsey's critique, Cleek retaliated by saying that she also taught manners. The famous chef couldn't believe his ears. Was this woman actually trying to pull his leg or was she just dumb? Well, she did manage to piss him off, that's for sure. But Chef Ramsey dismissed her in the most classic way by saying this. I teach manners too, Chef. Okay, please. Miss Manners, f***ing in line. While it wasn't just Cleeks' dish, but also her attitude that sucked, this next contestant served mashed potatoes topped with sugar. What? Who does that? Well, meet Carrie Keep. Keep debuted in the ninth season, where she ranked in eighth place. During the signature dish challenge, Keep was the first one to get her dish judged by Chef Ramsey. She ended up going against Will Lusberg. Keep served chicken fried ribeye with mashed potatoes and white truffle cream gravy. She then revealed that she added sugar to the mashed potatoes, which left Chef Ramsey in dismay. Keep then explained that her mother always made it that way and requested that the famous chef try it. She was so convinced that Chef Ramsey would love it and compared the experience of eating it to an orgasm. However, Chef Ramsey's reaction was just the opposite. The only thing he felt like doing was this. It is a chicken fried ribeye with Yukon gold mash and white truffle cream gravy. I actually have a little sugar in there. Stop, say that again. Just try it. Oh. From there on, Keep's performance on Hell's Kitchen was mediocre. She failed several challenges, and her constant talk about being hot and attractive annoyed many viewers. She even talked back to the guest judges on the sixth day during the 20-year reunion challenge. I think the guacamole is a little bit overpowering. We That's can all I that. tasted. Yeah, we can lighten up on that. Carrie, shut the it's quite surprising how Keep made it all the way to the 10th episode with a foul mouth like that, but this next contestant was labeled to be the worst of the worst. It'd be a shame not to feature this man's signature dish. He was the type of person who could mess up a simple pancake. We're, of course, referring to Raj Branston from the 8th season. During the signature dish challenge, Branston was the 8th and final person to get his dish judged by Chef Ramsay. He was put up against Sabrina Brimhall, but the dish didn't look anything like a pancake. This might have been the first time Chef Ramsay was served something like this, and he was clearly in shock. Not only was the dish a mess, but since it had so much oil, it looked like the pancakes were taking a piss. Kudos to Chef Ramsay for trying something as disgusting as that. When he finally tasted it, Branson was deemed to be one of the worst chefs on Hell's Kitchen. This guy was so slow and confused that he frustrated the famous chef beyond belief. Due to his poor skills, Branson was only able to make it to the third episode before being booted out of the competition. While Branson will go down in history as one of the worst yet most memorable contestants on Hell's Kitchen, this next contestant was so lazy that you could tell from the get-go. Lacey D'Angelo, who was featured in the 5th season, ranked in ninth place. During the signature dish challenge, D'Angelo was the 5th person to have her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. She presented a chicken and blackberry sauce dish. Upon seeing the dish, Chef Ramsay inquired about where it came from. Apparently, she said it came from her workplace, a corporate dining buffet-style restaurant. After tasting it though, Chef Ramsay immediately spat it out and said this. Chicken and blackberries, where did that come from? Where's work? I do corporate dining. Like a restaurant, is it? Um, it's a buffet style restaurant. You surf, they eat. Straight after, they vomit. Well, you could learn a lot about a chef from their signature dish. And D'Angelo came across as a lousy chef who whined about almost everything. This was spot on since on the very first day, when her team was working hard during the service, D'Angelo just threw that all away. Right in the middle of things, she felt so overwhelmed that she felt the need to say this. I, I quit, you guys. What? Honestly, I'm not sure how she made it to the 8th episode with such a sour attitude. But, on the other hand, this contestant had the weirdest inspiration for her signature dish. In the 14th season, viewers were introduced to Chris Schmirler. During the signature dish challenge, Schmirler was the 6th person from the red team to present her dish. She ended up going against Michael Dussault. Schmirler presented a ginger-crusted chicken breast and revealed that she was inspired by something that you would never think of. Jeff Ramsey couldn't help but laugh when Schmirler said that she drew inspiration from the grocery store's cookie aisle. The famous chef was glad that Schmirler wasn't inspired by the pet aisle, in which case we couldn't imagine what the outcome would be. Jeff Ramsey braced himself to taste Schmirler's dish, and just as he put it in his mouth, this is what he did. That is ginger-crusted chicken. I was in the cookie aisle. I was trying to get ideas, and I have ginger cookies. 
I'm glad you were inspired in the cookery aisle, not the <laughs> pet food aisle. Oh. oh, really? Oh, no. Oh, my God, really? That is hideous. Sorry. Schmirler was clearly a lost soul, and this was clear from her performance. She was unfocused, very confused, and also made a mess of the tickets. Things got so bad that the red team was eventually kicked out of the kitchen and Schmirler was booted from the show. Schmirler was the first contestant to be eliminated that season, but this next contestant served an entire pumpkin as it was and didn't even bother to season it. We're talking about Luis Petroza, the runner-up of season 4. Now, Petroza fans, please don't berate us for having Petroza's dish on this list. You kind of have to agree though that for someone of his caliber, we're surprised that he served a dish like this. He claimed that he had no particular specialty since he was well-rounded, but this dish showed otherwise. Petroza's dish left Chef Ramsay feeling really confused since it was an entire pumpkin on a greasy dish. When the famous chef picked the pumpkin up, it was literally dripping. Chef Ramsay trashed the potatoes because, come on, how can you eat something like that? Petroza then revealed that it was a table-side dish and opened the pumpkin to reveal a chicken hidden inside. Sadly though, Chef Ramsay wasn't impressed. The chicken was so dry, the pumpkin was in season rights, and the only thing that Chef Ramsay wanted to do was this. There's um, a Cornish hen inside. Chef. A Cornish hen? These are potatoes. And how much grease and fat and oil did you fry in? So what's the uh, dish called? Hen in a pumpkin. Right now, looking at that mess, I'd like to stick your head in there, you know that. But again, Petroza was one of Hell's Kitchen's humblest and greatest chefs. He consistently scored high points when it came to his cooking, attitude, leadership, and collaborative skills. However, this talented chef is no longer with us, but he did leave us with some memorable moments. This next contestant though presented an exotic dish that could only be imagined by someone who's high. Matt Sigil, who was in the 5th season, ranked in 6th place. During the signature dish challenge, Sigil was the 6th person to get his dish judged by Chef Ramsay. When Sigil presented his dish, he believed that it would stand out and live up to Chef Ramsay's expectations. Well, it looks like it did stand out, but for different reasons. He served Chef Ramsay his exotic tartare, which consisted of raw venison, diverse scallops, caviar, and grated chocolate. The famous chef was shocked to hear the combination of ingredients. Like, who the hell mixes caviar with white chocolate? Chef Ramsay couldn't contain himself and asked this. I call it exotic tartare. It's with venison and diverse scallops, with caviar and white chocolate. Do you smoke? Cigarettes? No. After tasting the dish, Chef Ramsay couldn't stop throwing up. This was indeed a gut-wrenching dish. While this was the worst combination of ingredients Chef Ramsay has ever seen, this next contestant served gumbo that made everyone throw up. During the signature dish challenge in the 8th season, Antonia Borgman was the third person to have her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. She ended up going against Louis Curtis. Borgman made a Mardi Gras gumbo, and when she lifted up the lid, Chef Ramsay was appalled with what he saw. It looked like diarrhea. She stated that everyone loved her gumbo, but when Chef Ramsay tasted it, he did this. It's a uh, Mardi Gras gumbo. Oh, God. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Are you crazy? Have you tasted that? No, I didn't get a chance to taste it, Chef. <coughs> when Chef Ramsay asked her if she tasted her dish before plating it, Borgman said that she didn't have enough time as an excuse. But guys, we have all the time in the world to keep you entertained. We're going to keep pushing out exciting content on the channel, but we need your support. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, what did Chef Ramsay do with the gumbo? He asked all the other contestants to taste her dish when Borgman sarcastically asked them to throw it all away. There was not one person who didn't gag after tasting it. Rob McHugh called it repulsive, Nana Sively and Boris Polshuk were close to throwing up, and Vinnie Accardi compared the dish to a big bowl of mud. And poor Chef Ramsay, he threw up more than two times. Thank God we never got to see Borgman in action, since the very next day she had some health complications and quit. So, can you think of any other signature dishes that made Chef Ramsay throw up? Let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, guys!